Yeah, well, well, that is maybe one of the most important sentences you need to hear right now, that he is with you in all the midst of your problems and in of your everyday life, that he is in a way with you, that it really helps. It's still okay to say, um, it's it's not okay just to say, oh, he's with me in a way that doesn't matter, but he is, he is, he surrounds me and he's in me in a way that really should me feel comfortable uh, against all the things I will face in the next in the next month, because I have to say to my spirit, and I have to this, I have to say Wait, this to you, spirit. So therefore, therefore, uh, therefore, um, yeah, I think this is something very very encouraging. So now we are going right into the sermon, and we are going through the second part of the chapter. Uh, chapter 24 of the gospel of matthew so and the world building team again made a, a fantastic work a work to build up um the world that expresses the apocalyptical views of jesus christ so to have some context jesus went with his disciples on a hill and they were thinking, how will it look how will it look like when you come back so and he gives some answers that are really mm, not encouraging that they are really disturbing so but we have to fix we have to face this i was going to preach the whole gospel era not only the chill out verses and something like this those verses that really that really um, make us discuss with god so if you're friends with god if you have a relationship with god then there will be some parts in the bible that where you feel the need to talk to him so this is some um, symptom of a very very healthy face faith um, if you if you have this attitude to say, hey, there are some difficult verses, and I just don't just eat them, don't just read them, I discuss them with my Lord, and sometimes I get answers and sometimes not. So, and I will give you some answers I get, give you, uh, I, I got, and I will give you some questions that are not answered. <laughs> so, therefore, let us go right into the sermon building. So, please follow me. <clears throat> Come, 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 come. Sorry, <laughs> just kidding. Okay. <laughs> By the way, again, um, I'm now on my Oculus Quest one in a, a university library, and I hope that the internet, uh, that the internet will um, give give everything so that I, that I will not have any lags or just um, uh, um, maybe crash or something like this. So, but uh, if you if that happens, I have a backup plan. But yeah. Just that you know. First of all, though, in chapter one, in, in the first part of chapter 24, Jesus expressed some things that will happen before he comes back again. And he goes further on right now. Immediately after the persecution of the persecution of the believers, those days the sun will be darkened. The moon will give, not give light. And the stars will seem to fall from the heavens. And the powers overshadowing the earth will be convulsed. I think this is an interesting translation because I don't think that the star will seem to fall from the heavens. I think in the original, it's in the original version, it is will fall from the heavens. Maybe I don't. I'm not, I don't know for sure. But sometimes maybe Bible translations try to to calm down the words of Jesus a little bit so it matches more with our naturalistic uh, point of view. And it is maybe not uh, not correct all the time. So, but again. So the the world building the world the apocalyptic world Jesus is painting right painting right now is not a nice one. It is a it is a darkened one. The, the sun will be darkened. The moon will give no light. Everything will implode, explode. The stars will come down on. So and this is a bad this is bad news for everybody in this world that had that has <clears throat> that um is um. <clears throat> that it was connected to the good parts of this world. If you like this world, if the world just be, uh, just give you good things, if, if the world helped you to, to get a career, to get into power, and thus this is all bad news. Because you loved in this world, because this world was something you built up um, all you had on, and all this will collapse. Yeah, this is some hard news then for you. But imagine this. Imagine being a person oppressed and marginalized, not marginalized, marginalized, no, that's the word, and marginalized in this world, and you 
may feel the need, you may feel uh, uh, that the need that this world has to collapse. Yeah, there has to be another one. So there are some, in the, back in Judaism, back in those days, there were different kind of, um, Different, different kind of thinking uh, uh, thinking schools, yeah? And there were the apocalyptic ones, and there were the ones that said, yeah, there will be no apocalypse. But Jesus obviously said, yeah, there has to be an end to all of this. And more, and the people, people that uh, love this world and have every, um, have every luck in this world, they may don't, they don't see the need that this world needs to end. But Jesus was always, in the point of view of those people that were not in power, of those people that were oppressed, and in the point of view of those people, yeah, this is structures we we as humanity build it up, it have to collapse. This is this is maybe not that good news uh, in the first place, but yeah, it is good news for everybody who says hey, this has to end. And, um, to this point of view, I invite you to to get into. So let us go further on. Oh, how dark everything is here. Wait, those verses are not that hard to read if you are a metalhead and, and like those pictures Jesus is uh, painting. And then, and then, so should I read them with my metal book? It would be, it would fit more. And then at last, the signal of my coming will appear in the heavens, and there will be a big morning around the earth, and the nations of the world will see me arrive in the clouds of heaven with and great glory. Yeah, <clears throat> again, this, in this apocalyptic point of view, he points out what will what will be the last seconds of this world. And we all will witness this very moment. Jesus is painting here. There will be a signal. There will be mourning around the world. Uh, the, the nations, uh, every people of this world will see him arrive in the clouds of heaven, heaven with power and great glory. And I shall send forth angels with the sound of a mighty trumpet and they shall gather my chosen ones from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, there will be a gathering of all those people that kept true in faith. That there were no hypocrites, but stayed true with Jesus Christ. So now maybe the, the, the question appears, so am I one of them or am I not? I cannot answer this question to you, but uh, what I can what I can say is that I want to be one of those people. I want to be one of those chosen that the uh, angels collect. And uh, in, if it if I if this would happen right now, I'm very comfortable because I know I know what uh, I believe Jesus Christ and I and I have a strong faith in Him. Um, it's, they all all and they also have the hope that this uh, will remain that way. This should not lead me into something like, okay, uh, to some comfort that, that I say, okay, yeah, I am so sure, I'm so sure that I'm safe, so therefore I, I have, to, have to spend more effort into my faith. Well, this is not the case. Still, even if I'm secure, I am secure. If you, even if you're secure, that everything is okay with, between you and Jesus because he has given you, it's also not okay just then feel so comfortable to not spend your time with him, to not spend your time in intimacy with him, because then the enemy has every chance to put you away. There is every chance to put doubt into the depths of your heart, and you will not recognize it. Then the doubt will grow and grow and grow, and then, and then um, out of this, there will grow then a destruction of your faith. Therefore, we better have, better have, we better have the time of intim intimacy with our Lord. To we'll learn a lesson from the fig tree, hopefully it's not the way. When her branch is tender and the leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is almost here. There are many, many interpretations, by the way. So that is with all those apocalyptic um, lyrics, all, all those apocalyptic texts. There are many ways to interpret them. So this fig tree. Uh, often is used in the Old Testament as a symbol for Israel or Judah. So therefore, um, it could mean um, that this is, this, is, this is pointed out to, to Israel. So, and some Christians say, yeah, this has happened in the year 1948 when Israel became a state again. So this is 
the branch, this is meaning now the branch is tender, the leaves begin to sprout. Yeah, it could be, could also be not. So um, this is very, very, very not that easy to recognize here. Just so when you see all those, all these things beginning to happen, you can know that my return is near, even at the doors. But at the one side, yes, we can somehow know that Jesus Christ is near. And as every generation afterwards, we say this is the end time. So, um, and uh, every generation after us will say, no, this is the end time. And every generation after this will say, no, this is really, really, really the end time. Imagine people standing, uh, uh, standing in, in the USA after, uh, after 9-11. So they definitely would have thought that this is now the end, 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 end time. Or people in Germany in the year 1945, so after the Second World War was lost, they had every right to say, okay, this is now the end, 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 end. <laughs> people, or people in the year, uh, in the fifth, in the fifth, uh, fifth uh, century, when the Roman Empire, the Western Roman Empire, where it was uh, destroyed, they could also say, hey, this is now the end time. We have every season of our existence after those words of Jesus, every right to say, now this is the end, end, end time. Maybe um, we should be more careful with those words, even at the doors. Then at last, this age will come to a close. Yeah, this is this point that this world has to end. From a perspective of an oppressed people, this is not bad news. Heaven and earth, they will disappear. My words remain forever. By the way, I like being here on earth. I'm not one of those people that are that much oppressed or marginalized. Yeah? I'm a German in Germany. I'm uh, I'm a male German in Germany, so I am not that kind of an oppressed of, of oppressed ethnic or something like this. So therefore, yeah. But even I know that this world has to end because even I know that there is there, there are structures this world will never overcome, and therefore. Therefore, there has to be an, a finishing line. So God can create something very, very new. Yeah. But uh, even, if, even if Jesus says, on the one hand, yeah, when you recognize these and the signs, you know that the date is near. On the other hand, no one knows the date and hour, and the end will be, but even the angels. Or no, nor even God's son. Only the Father knows. So <clears throat> this could mean also many things. But first of all, we cannot point out just by scripture which date, uh, on which exact date Jesus Christ will come back again. But there are some crazy, crazy sects always tries to do this. Um, uh, some, uh, yeah, and uh, we all know that all those, ne all those things never occurred. So um, if uh, the next sect, the next Christian sect claims to exactly know when Jesus Christ comes back again, don't be so foolish to fall into the trap because it's so, so exactly standing here that it is not a young, because it is so exactly here pointed out, not even the son knows, knows the date, only the father knows. By the way, this scripture is very, very important in the inter-religious dialogue between Christians and Muslims because Muslims, uh, one of the most important things for Muslims is monotheism. So there is only one God. And Muslims uh, have a problem with us Christians uh, believing in Trinity. We believe that there is one God. Yeah, like the Muslims, we also believe this one God has its form as the Father, as the Father, as the Son, and as the Holy Spirit. So this drives them crazy. So in the, the inter-religious uh, dialogue, uh, this, this is pointed out a lot. Because if the Father is God and the Son is also God, how can then the Son not know something the Father knows? So, um, what I always say to this is that Trinity, the concept of Trinity, is meant to be mystical. So there are some differences between the Father and the Son, and somehow they are they are God, one God. And I don't know those answers, but it's not uh, un imaginable that in this realm it is not touchable by rationality in 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 a whole this realm has some space for mystics mystical things 
Yeah, this is how I answer uh, those questions for, for Muslims. So therefore, because um, the, the persons writing the, the Gospels, they also knew what they have written. So this is some obvious, strange verse they had to put into the Bible because just Jesus just said it. So therefore, yeah, I live with contradiction. If I read the Bible, I have and I need to live with contradiction. Therefore, I need not only my brain, 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 brain. I need, I, I need the Spirit of God to not only tell me the answers, to tell me which answers I need and which answers I do not need. And the answer to this, I do not need. Before I can calm down, but, uh, go and go further on. The world will be at ease, banquets and parties and weddings, just as it was in Noah's time, before the sudden coming of the flood. By the way, there's nothing wrong with uh, parties and weddings, obviously. Yeah, uh, Jesus Christ liked to party himself. But the, Jesus wanted to point out that there, there will be not, not nothing exactly recognizable just right before Jesus comes back. That's some kind of a contradiction, what he said before, huh? before there are some signs then you can recognize my coming is near and on this in this uh reverse he's saying yeah there will be weddings there will be parties not just like in the days before noah um for you don't know only the father knows so that is an obvious contradiction we jesus uh jesus calls us, us to live with. But there are some signs we can we can see yeah so there are some some things jesus points out other, on the other hand, we cannot say, okay, on this day, because this and that happens. Right? Because the state of California pointed out, this very, uh, all, uh, therefore, this is the end time, and therefore, uh, Jesus Christ is coming back in the next week, or in the next two weeks, then I uh, go on to this party. <laughs> it's crazy. But people wouldn't believe that uh, what was going to happen until the flood actually arrived and took them all away. So shall my coming be. Unexpected. Expected, unexpected. So let's go further on. And what then will happen on this very moment when Jesus Christ comes back again? When he gathers together the believers, the chosen ones, what will then happen? Two men will be working together in the fields, and one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be going about their household tasks and will be taken out the left. So some Christians, especially since uh, I think since 200, some kind of 200 or 150 years, are interpreting this verse as kind of um, Entrückung. Oh my gosh, I don't know the English word. There, there's some, there's some uh, theology out there that says will be one time when all the Christians, all the real Christians in the world will be beamed up. There will be big destructions. And there are some, some, some even some, some books, even some movies with Hollywood actors um, that, uh, uh, that have this as topic. So, uh, for example, the movie Left Behind. It starts with all Christians are beamed up to, into, into the heaven, um, and therefore uh, cars are crashing and uh, planes are crashing because all those Christian pilots and drivers, Christian truck drivers are beam up. So, but um, this the theology is based on, uh, is, is, um, it has its arguments, but uh, it's based on some kind of those, well, those verses. And you could also interpret those verses as something like, but there will be a judgment and Jesus will come back again and there will be some people on the left and there will be people on the right. To, to make out of these verses and out of one verse in the Revelation that there will be a big beaming up, uh, it is not that easy to argue that way because maybe some of you are believing that they are beamed up so if Jesus, uh, that there will be um, some kind of um, I forgot the English word. Can somebody um, text me email the, the English word for me? Yeah, to I see some people, Rochelle, you're typing. Um, uh, the, the the film uh, left behind where the has, has this topic so if you could tell me that would be very very nice yeah there are some arguments but i won't say that this those arguments are are, are that good so maybe um you, if you just believe this because christians have told you so uh, then you better go back into the bible and search for yourself so maybe right maybe not 
But um, it's not right for me just to believe this because of Christian movies and Christian books. That's not enough. It's not enough. That is what I, on my workplace, I have a workplace where, sometimes, where I also have, um, work with Muslims, young Muslims. Um, and um, when we argue about religion, um, then this is something I tell them too. I tell them, hey, your, your opinion you have on this or that topic, you just found out on TikTok, you just found out from your uh, Muslimic pastor, and you just found out maybe through some Muslimic friends, so you better you search yourself into yourself, your nose into the Quran, search out. Therefore, we as Christians also are called, we are called to search in the Bible what God has to say about those topics, not only believe Christian movie actors, okay? That's part important. So, so be prepared, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. And this preparedness, uh, Jesus will point out um, in the next verses. So let's go further on. What does preparedness mean? So does this mean we don't need to sleep anymore? So let us all get some coffee and be awakened till Jesus comes back then die of brain, brain blood or something. No. So just as a man can prevent trouble from thieves by keeping watch them, so you can avoid trouble by always being ready for my unannounced return. Yeah. So because the, the, the return of Jesus Christ is not expectable, um, we don't know, we, we have every reason not to let our faith just go, go away, to not to, to, to be too comfortable with our faith. So uh, we cannot say, okay, let me just, um, let me just, this, this, ah, my, oh, okay. Uh, let me, um, uh, one could say, um, like Caesar Constantine from the Roman Empire, I just baptized myself at the end of my life because then I can have a, uh, have a good life. And then the last seconds of my life, I convert to Christianity and, every, and everything is okay. So this, this don't function, doesn't function very often. It functioned one time when Jesus was at the cross on his, I think on his right, was some, some murderer. And he asked Jesus, hey, what are, you are the son of God. So you have to bring me with you into your kingdom. And Jesus said, hey, on this day, on this very day, you will be at my kingdom. So, okay, no, this person here, <laughs> here it was okay. But normally, normally not. So therefore, um, what does it mean to watch out? It means it means something that I need to have heart that is always longing for Jesus. So what Jesus is telling us in this verse and the verses to come is something that that um, we should long for, but what we cannot do on our own. And this is what I want to point out. But let us go for. Uh, let us just read some more verses. Are you a wise and faithful servant of the Lord? Have I given you the task of managing my household to feed my children day by day? Blessing on you if I return and find you faithfully doing your work. I will put such faithful ones in charge of everything now. This is the character of Jesus, huh? Yeah, there will be some big apocalypse like then. But if he finds you, if he finds you in the good work, if he finds you, your heart pointed out to Jesus, building up his kingdom. And not only will be amused, he will be joyful, but he will put us into everything he owns. Gosh, this is big. And if you question, hey, but maybe I'm not one of those, yeah? Um, and this is the big question that stands behind all of those verses I am I'm reading. This is, this is something um, what, where, we, where I, for myself, really like to include um, transformation of the Holy Spirit into because this those verses um, seem to put us into pressure they say okay you better watch out because you don't know you you, you should be they, they, these verses seem to to uh, speak like this so you don't know when Jesus Christ comes back again so you better ha um, be moral then you better have moral values you better do the good work because you don't know when in the uh, when the, the, the when Jesus Christ comes again. This is not the topic in all the other parts of the gospel. All the other parts of the gospel is a, is a uh, it is about forgiveness, it is about repentance, and it is about the Holy Spirit that gives us 
of these things. Therefore, it cannot be, it cannot be. Jesus Christ now makes a big turning point and says, yeah, but uh, then please live a moral life um, just because you're permanently frightened, I could come back again. So that cannot be the case. I'm very sure about this. It's, it is important for me to build up his kingdom, but not out of fear and frightfulness, but out of the knowledge that out of his spirit, I can do everything. Out of his spirit, I can, re can receive such a renewed mind that these verses are not hard for me. And this, this here, aren't you a wise and faithful servant of the Lord? Have I given you the task of managing the blessings on you if I return and find you faithfully? It is not hard for the spirit filled. It is not hard for the spirit guided to be found faithfully doing work of Jesus Christ. This is, and this is some, something that can, calm, that can calm you down. Those verses, those verses are um, too mad for you. Um, I won't calm you that down. Yeah, I don't want to be the guy. Yeah, this is sometimes talking a little bit harsh, but let me, let me silence it. Let me soften it. No, no, no. I don't want to soften it. But I want to say the, the big clue here, like in so many other verses, it is the Holy Spirit and the life that comes with him. And to choose this life means you are able to do so. Yeah. By the way, feed by children day by day. I, I read some sermons about these verses. Those first tried to say, hey, it's about teaching. It's about being the good news. It's about um, being a pastor and to teach the right things. I think that's uh, very, very uh, shortened of this, uh, uh, to think of a shortened version of this, these verses and this interpretation. Um, because I think it's really, he, what is standing here is really building up his kingdom. So you knew the task managing his household. What is the household of Jesus Christ? His kingdom. Feed my children day by day. Yeah, that could mean that he preached the gospel, but that could also mean to feed his children. No, I'm not lagging. Feed his children. Give some food to children that maybe have no food. So therefore, it's the social gospel, some here may fear. I think this is something that is included right here. Yeah, not only spiritual feeding. Also, hey, there are, there are marginalized people here. There are oppressed people. There are, there, there are people that have no food. Therefore, yeah, if I find you feeding those children, yeah, that's good. That's good. I, uh, I see you then doing your, doing your work. Now we come to the other part. I won't soften those words. But if you are evil, say to yourself, my Lord won't be coming for a while and being oppressing your fellow servants, partying and getting drunk, your Lord will arrive unannounced and unexpected. First of all, first verses here are, that if you are evil, if you are evil. So maybe um, that is the... the, the <laughs> jumping point i would say in german that is the the real point here um if you're evil and say to yourself if that is in your mind that was i don't think that jesus is pointing this out to all the disciples he's talking right right to but um uh, he's pointing this out to all those people that are not the oppressed ones but the oppressors all those reason jesus christ needs to come back again those people they won't have the best time those people they say that are Christians, they say that are building up the kingdom, helping the oppressed ones, um, constructing, constructing structures of power that oppresses children, women, uh, and everybody. So, and no, they, um, they, they seem to do so, but in their hearts and in their mind, they are evil. And they, they are not helping the oppressed, but they are the op oppressors. Therefore, they are the hypocrites. And if you, if you look into church history and you're wondering, hey, why is Jesus inter, inter, intervening, why interventioning? Why isn't he interventioning? Some of those bad times, like Krushitz and something like this, this is at least calming me a little bit down. Because he said, this is especially pointed out to all those, all those hypocrites partying, getting drunk on the one side, but on the other side, claiming that they are, the, they are uh, Christians. 
for your Lord will arrive unannounced and unexpected. Then now to the last verses. And severely whip you and send you off the judgment of the hypocrites. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, yeah. Still the question occurs when you read those verses, am I one of these? With the help of the Holy Spirit, even if you are right now one of these, the Holy Spirit can change you. If you rely on him, not be one of these. And if those questions, if those questions deep in your heart and your people right now, and you're definitely not one of them, because there is, um, there is some fear of the Lord in you. It is the beginning, the end, but the beginning, of a journey, um, that leads you to be a good servant. Servant, uh, when the house becomes like again says good to you, but you 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 build up my kingdom, get the good work, yeah. But there will be people. That say that, that say holy words, maybe in sermons. Then afterwards, um, get completely out of it because they're evil in their mind, um, and they're not changeable by the Holy Spirit because they're not even interested in being changed. And they will then have a time of weeping, gnashing of teeth, because teeth, because they will come to the judgment of the hypocrites. And that is my sermon. If you have some questions, then put on participation. If you want to question something, if you want to question if you want to ask something, then be free to something. Andy. I am here. Just wanted to say that uh, thank you very much for the sermon. I enjoyed it. Um, I think the word you were looking for before, where one goes to heaven and one stays, the English word would be rapture. <sighs> rapture. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, rapture. Oh, rapture is the right word. Okay. I now hit some table with my controller. Yeah. Okay, but thank you. Rapture. Yeah, that's exactly the word that I was looking for. Yeah. Um. Another? If not, then let us just have prayer time and then we're dismissed. Um, Mr. Pete, uh, if you want to uh, lead us into the uh, Yes, very much. Prayer. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Yes, Hello? Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it when there's so many other areas in all space, other churches, and here you are with us. And and so uh, somehow yeah. we want to express our appreciation. A and it's my desire that the Spirit of the Lord will continue to minister to you throughout the day, that you will actually feel his presence and encouragement in your life. Whatever the needs may be in your life, Father God, thank you. For you see your children have been faithful this morning here in church. And so I just ask for a covering of your presence and your spirit to be over their lives as they go about their daily walk. Throughout the week, even so, Lord, and for those whom they love, their family members, when they're around them, they will feel the peace and the comfort that can only come from you, Father God. I thank you for the ministry of your servant today, his dedication, uh, uh, blessing Pastor Bismick in his studies. Let him have that sharp mind and, and, and learn the things he wants to learn. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is helping, helping us in our daily life. Whatever our desire is, as long as it glorifies God and blesses people, thank you, Father, for using us ministering special to the needs of your people be it done in the name of jesus and everybody agrees with me by saying amen and amen amen good hey, thank you for this anointed prayer uh as always mr pete <laughs> and thank all you. of you have a very very blessed sunday a blessed monday day and all those days and don't let us forget that most worthy is the intimacy with the Father. Out of this, let us stay our daily life. Amen. So that's it. So I have a good time, and now I go to my my library and.
No, you're unmuted. 